Linux. An operating system I think a lot of people have heard of, but know very little about. For the uninformed, Linux seems more like that OS that like super geniuses and hackers and all these super crazy people can use. And maybe 10 years ago that was the case. But these days Linux has turned into something that almost anybody can make use of and has been getting more and more support the longer it's been around. And the reality is, is that it's turned into something that people can just use as an everyday regular PC now. And the best part is, since it's a free open source setup, it's not been filled with a bunch of corporate garbage, it's not bloated, it's designed for the end user. And the biggest downside for most people has been being slowly sold over the last few years, rather quietly. These days, the apps that many people need on their computers are available very easily on Linux now. Especially on my channel, I've got a lot of people into gaming and things like that. And all of the major apps for that work on Linux. You have Discord, Steam has very good support, you could play like Minecraft on it, which is one of the few games you have outside of Steam generally. Web browsers work just fine. And you also have a much lighter weight OS, so if you have a weaker computer, you're probably going to have improved performance on gaming. But with all of those positives, there are also a couple of negatives. While the support for Linux has been improving, and overall I would say it's good, there's no doubt that it is still the least supported operating system of the big three. And some programs can even be a little bit deceptive, where they do technically support Linux, but they support it really badly, for example DaVinci Resolve. Resolve has a Linux version that technically works, but it's filled with so many problems that make it insanely hard to use that it's just not worth setting up. And there are other apps like that out there as well, I'm sure. But that was just the example I've been trying to troubleshoot for a while on my system. And lastly, while I did say that the performance would be better on a weaker PC just because you're going to have less resources going into the operating system, if you're on a more powerful PC that doesn't really have any struggle running its operating system anyways, some games are less optimized on Linux than on Windows, as you might expect, and you may get worse performance because of that. That being said, that isn't a very common issue especially on Steam since they have very strong Linux support using their Proton setup. And there is a pretty good bet that they're going to continue to have that because they are running Steam OS for their Steam Deck, so of course they have a financial incentive to support Linux very effectively. So now that you kind of have an understanding about the ups and downs of Linux, let's talk about how you could implement actually using it. The first thing we need to talk about is that the idea of Linux operating system isn't a real thing. Linux is actually a kernel, which is the thing that makes computers work on the software level, basically. And anybody can take the Linux kernel and create an operating system using it. That's why you have so many different flavors of Linux that people talk about called distros. So you have sources like Ubuntu, Debian, and Mint that are all very user-friendly and kind of work out of the box really well. But you can also have other flavors that have specialized purposes, like Kali Linux is used for cybersecurity, for example. Or you have Alpine Linux that is a hyper light OS that has the bare minimums to run a functioning computer. And you even have the operating systems like Arch and Gen 2, if you hate yourself. But yeah, the first step of getting involved in Linux is going to be to pick the best distro for you. If you're a complete newcomer to Linux, I recommend going with either Ubuntu or Mint if you're going for a desktop setup. Whereas if you're going for a server setup like what I've talked about in previous videos, I'd probably go with Ubuntu or Debian server if you're a newbie. And if you kind of already know what you're doing, and especially if you have very weak server hardware, you could run Alpine. I really like that operating system actually. For my purposes, I decided to go with Ubuntu for my desktop. It automatically installs most of the drivers for your hardware you need, so everything like my keyboard has all the functioning lights that it normally had, my microphone works out of the box, my GPU is automatically detected by apps, and these are all things that are totally normal on Windows, but you actually have to have a little bit of special setup for on Linux normally, but Ubuntu takes care of it for you, fortunately. After you've decided what distro is best for you, the next step is how you're actually going to install it. And as is always the case with Linux, there are a ton of options to fit whatever your needs are. For most people, especially if you already have Windows, I recommend doing a dual boot setup, especially if you have access to multiple storage drives on your machine. For example, I have an M2 SSD, a SATA SSD, and then a regular hard drive. 
So the setup I'm gonna be going for is installing Linux on the M2 SSD, and then I'm going to have a very minimal Windows install on my smaller SSD, the SATA SSD, and I'm going to specifically use that for editing videos because Resolve just doesn't work well on Linux at all. Then for my big hard drive, I'm going to format that in a format that both of the operating systems can read from without problem. And it is not going to have any operating system installed on it. It's just going to be a storage drive that I can reach on both OS's. But even if you don't have a bunch of different drives, as long as you have a decent amount of storage period, you can partition a single drive to multiple operating systems and it will just work on its own right away. But hey, if you have no use for Windows and everything you want to run works on Linux, feel free to just dive right into it and replace everything with Linux on your drive. I kind of see it as an opportunity to clean up my PC setup a little bit and organize things better, because I'll basically have a separate partition for doing work on my PC and Windows, and then I'm going to have Linux for my personal use and fun and my gaming and all that. And now I want to address some of the common concerns that people have about Linux. And I think the first one we'll start off with is the terminal. A lot of people are scared of CLIs or command line interfaces because they're so used to using GUIs or guided user interfaces. But a CLI is actually very similar to a GUI, it's just a different way of navigating it. Instead of clicking around on icons with your mouse, you instead will type in the name of the thing you're trying to do instead. And with this method of input, you can do some things much faster than you can using a GUI. For example, if you wanted to make a bunch of folders for something, if you were using a GUI, you would have to go and like right click, start new folder, name the folder, and repeat that process over and over. But with the CLI, it's as simple as typing mkdir, and then as many folders as you want, you just put a space between them, and if you want the folder to have a space in it, you just put some apostrophes and it's ready to go. And while being proficient with the terminal will make your life easier on Linux, I don't think it's a necessity, and I think for the rare cases that you do actually have to use a terminal in Linux, there's enough documentation out there that you don't need to remember the commands, but remembering the ones that you're going to be using frequently, like cd, mkdir, or ls, would be very helpful. The next thing I want to talk about is the programs that are not available on Linux. Things like Adobe Suite, or the Microsoft Office. And the great thing is, is that the Linux community has thought of that, and actually has free open source software alternatives to them. For example, in place of Photoshop, you have GIMP. And for the Microsoft Office options, you have something called LibreOffice. And LibreOffice is actually extra cool because it even works with Microsoft Word documents. So you can even use it in place of Word for real purposes outside of personal ones. And I think the last point is going to be the need for troubleshooting. Just big picture stuff here, you're going to run into problems on Linux that you wouldn't run into on Windows. And in a perfect world, we would have Windows without all of the bloat and corporate garbage and everything on it. But we don't, so it comes down to a decision for you to make. Do you want everything to just work straight out of the box without any tinkering, but you have to have a bunch of crap and spyware on your machine? Or do you want to have an OS that you could turn into exactly what you want, but it takes some more work? And that decision might seem obvious to some, but not everybody's as into tech as we might be, and that's okay. Either way, I hope you learned something from this video, and maybe I opened your eyes to a possibility for you. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought, and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying this content, and I hope to see you guys later. Bye-bye.